Hi everyone, it's Claire here and today I'm going to do a requested video on how to make your own soap. Now, the way I do it um, is I use a melt and pour base. Now you can make your soap completely from scratch um, but to do that process you need quite a few ingredients and you also need a um, chemical called lye. Now when you make soap using your lye you need to have specific um, utensils and a specific jug for the lye um, as well as protective gloves and ideally um, protective eyewear. Now for me I don't really like having um, something that dangerous in my kitchen um, because that's obviously where I'm making it. I don't have a crafting area where I can do it separately for example it is around where I prepare food and I also as you know have cats in my house and I would be terribly worried I'm gonna I don't know drop some of it on the floor or something because cats are always roaming around my feet so for those reasons I choose to do melt and pour now this doesn't mean that you don't have a huge amount that you can customize there. So the type of melt and pour I get is this brand, Stevenson Personal Care Melt and Pour Crystal Soap Base. Now if you're in the UK you can get this from Hobbycraft. Um, you can also get it many, many websites online, it is very easily available. You can buy it from 500 grams all the way up to 25 kilograms. Uh, this is a one kilogram pot. And they have quite a variety of options. You can get organic. You can get SLS free soap. So if you are allergic to sodium lauryl sulfate or you want to avoid that ingredient altogether, then they do a melt and pour for that. They also do um, more fancy bases such as argan oil. This one here is oatmeal and shea butter, which is what I'm going to be using and talking about today. Now it comes in these tubs that are literally, oops, sorry, I'm moving the camera now, a solid um, block the size of this of soap, which, soap base, which is rock hard. Now what I do, because obviously I have um, problems with my shoulder, is I get my husband to chop that up for me. Um, but you can chop it up yourself. The easiest thing I find is to chop it into portions like this that you can then store in a jar or plastic container. One of these tubs does three of these very large jars which are um, 500 ml apple sauce jars and soap wise I used the same mold as for my lotion bars if you've already seen that video and I would get 12 and a bit soaps from one box of this um, using that mold of course you can use smaller molds fancy shape molds it will vary per mold and also per soap type because for example this has oats in it so what you're going to need is your soap base now this particular one like i said is um oats and shea butter so shea butter is very good for moisturizing it's excellent for sensitive skin eczema and psoriasis prone skin, dry skin and anti-aging. The oats in here are a very, very gentle form of exfoliation. So if you are um, someone with very, very sensitive skin that cannot use all those harsh grain um, exfoliants but still want to be able to exfoliate your body and your face but really gently, then oats are an excellent exfoliant. They're also extremely eco-friendly because 
a lot of the exfoliants on the market that have gone away from the harsh grains and that are made more for sensitive skin contain what's known as microbeads. Now these little microbeads are um, very bad for the environment. They go out into the sea. There's lots of information online if you want to look that up. Um, certain countries are starting to ban them from being in products. Um, I'm not sure where the UK is on that. I haven't really looked into it too much as I don't use them uh, in anything, any of my products. I won't buy anything with that in. So that's what oats are good for. This particular melt and pour base has no parabens in it. It is completely vegetable based and it contains vitamins E, D and pro-vitamin A which are again very good for sensitive skin and anti-aging. So that's our base. Now we're also going to add in here, obviously this is all optional and you can fiddle with this recipe as you please. We're also going to add in a little bit of golden jojoba oil which is super good for sensitive skin and anti-aging as well as our calendula infused oil which is amazing for eczema, dry skin, psoriasis, um, young skin so if you want a nice soap for children I would probably leave out the um, jojoba oil and just do the soap base with the calendula oil. Then we have a choice of essential oils. Now of course you can leave this fragrance free how it comes if you are extremely extremely sensitive um, if you want some essential oils to add in here that are great for sensitive skin and not known to be allergens for most people but again you're going to want to do a patch test of any new products you make you can use some lavender essential oil along with some lovely chamomile is that picking that up chamomile essential oil this is roman chamomile a really delicate fragrance um, roman chamomile and lavender are great for all skin types specifically sensitive and young skin as well as mature skin so if you're planning to use this for all the family they would be good choices for you if you want to amp it up a little bit frankincense is a gorgeous fragrance really really great anti-aging properties so you could do lavender and frankincense for example that's a really nice combo and another one if you're less sensitive and you want a slightly stronger fragrance so you could use rose geranium with lavender or rose geranium and chamomile or even rose geranium and frankincense it's a really versatile oil so you can really choose what oils you want to put in. So as before with our lotion bars we've got our boiling pan here and I have again got my Pyrex dish with the notch handles so that um, it's safe to remove with oven gloves and we're going to pop that over the saucepan. Now let's move you forward a little bit. Let's move this and move you forward a little bit Ta -da. there we are so we're going to measure out on our scales our soap now for this mold that I used before it holds about 90 grams per mold of soap but obviously there is a bit of give depending on the ingredients and even each batch kind of is a bit different so So I'm aiming to make three, which is round about 270. So we've got a bit over there. Give me a bit of leeway, I think. So I might just use that. And then if there's any left, I can always just make a really teeny tiny travel one or something. So 
We're going to pop those into our bain-marie. Or if you have a double boiler, you can use a double boiler. And we're going to, oh, that was a bit hot, a bit of steam got me there. Pop those in there. Keep that to the side. Move that. Okay, so the good thing with um, Milton Pour, I will just take you over and show you it in there now. So it's just in there, as you can see, it's already started melting a bit and you can get a closer look you can see the oats in there and it's a very oh now we're steaming up creamy color um, from the shea butter so we're just basically going to wait for that to melt down Now again, I'm using my silicone tools because they are just so easy to clean and um, keep to the side. Now, other soaps that you can do, you can get really kind of designery with these soaps. You can get a um, clear soap base by the same company. Um, even the argan oil one, I think, is... It's kind of like a yellow clear or you can get a crystal clear and you can add soap dyes to them if you want colored soaps now one thing i would say is the majority of soap colors out there are not natural so if you're wanting to keep your soap as natural as possible then you want to look into natural mica dyes for cosmetics um, mineral dyes which will dye it nice um, and naturally for you you can use things such as beetroot powder which is readily available online to buy you can get it at some soap making um, and cosmetic making shops or you can get it from herbal stores you can get things like beetroot powder hibiscus powder and they will all give you a nice kind of ready purple colour. Um, so there are natural ways that you can dye it with micas or vegetable dyes basically to keep things natural. You can also add in petals and make them look pretty. So some ground up rose petals or some calendula because it's very skin softening so calendula is a lovely one if you want to add petals in i wouldn't add whole buds or anything with leaves or anything sharp because obviously it's soap you're going to be rubbing it through your hands you're going to use it in the shower or the bath so you don't want anything sort of um that could harm you in there or especially if you're planning to use these for children you can make them in different shapes if you want to encourage your kids to use them in the bath. So there's lots of variations you can do. You can get the most basic, plain, melt and pour soap base and really jazz it up with colours and petals and essential oils. Um, so it's completely up to you. And I worked it out that from a one kilogram box in this size soap, which like I say is about 90 grams worth, you get um, 12 from the box and it works out at about, and this is, I got this in Hobbycraft, bear in mind, because I didn't want to have to wait for it to come online. Um, from Hobbycraft, paying seven pound for a kilogram works out at 55p per soap, um, which is a good price for a really nice natural soap that you've added your natural ingredients to but if you shop online you can get this base cheaper and I worked it out that from some places you can get down to as much as little I should say as 30 odd p per bar so that works out quite nice so we're well on our way now to this um, melting but what I'm going to do is pause so you don't have to watch the whole process and I will come back when it is all liquid and we're ready to do the next stage. Okay, so we're back. 
So, down here, as you can see, it is completely, let me just hold this in the other hand, completely like a thick, creamy liquid now. I mean, it looks so, it looks yummy. I can't lie. Do not eat this. <laughs> but it does look very, very nice. So, let's go back over here a minute. And I'll be back on this little makeshift stand I've made. So, what I'm going to do now, firstly, is move you up here a bit and hope you don't go flying. Ta-da! Okay, that was easy enough. So, I'm going to turn off my heat and I'm going to add some Yehoba oil. Now, measurement wise I don't usually measure this but it's probably I'm going to use the cap and it will be just about half of this cap so probably a teaspoon I would say so there's a teaspoon of the Jehovah oil right around the edge there and we'll stir that in like so And then we're going to add about 20 drops of calendula. Which is about a teaspoon of calendula infused oil. Now what I'm going to do is because I want to create some different fragrances. So... I am going to add the fragrance to each individual mold as I go along because otherwise I'm going to have to make a batch of all the same. So a really nice easy way to do that is you're going to need your ladle. Make sure you get all your soap off the side because remember this is product. We have paid for the product. Ooh, oh, that spell me. Right, and I'm going to take my ladle now. Ooh. And I'm just going to fill up one of these moulds. Main camera. Yes, I am. Good job. In we go. So, let you fill this up. And then to this one, I'm just going to add five drops of lavender. That was six in the end, but there we are. Then I'm going to take back my spatula I was just using and very gently stir it in so that it's not concentrated in one position. Like so. Should have been prepared with some kitchen towel, which I will get now. And you want to wipe your spatula. It will really easily wipe off while it's still wet. You don't take the whole lot off, but just so you're not mixing your oils. Then, let's do our next one. You see how thick and creamy this is. It is so moisturising. I mean, you're going to love this, particularly if you have very dry and sensitive skin. And in this one, I am going to add some chamomile, I think. Nice, really, really gentle one. You coming? One. Okay. And then I mix that in. You can see already it's starting to get thicker and to solidify. 
Oh, that smells absolutely gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I absolutely love the smell of chamomile. Honestly, you just cannot beat it. Get that little bit off there and somehow make it worse or what. Go in. There we are. Wipe that spatula off yet again. And then last but not least, I need to get my oven gloves for this one, I think. Release from the pan, please. Thank you. And oh, I might pour it. In we go. Now you see that one's not quite filling because some of my mix has solidified on the bowl. So all I'm going to do is pop that back on and pop my heat back on again, just on low, just to get all of that mix. Make sure you get it out your spatula. Like so. If it's not going to come out, put your spatula in there and it will just literally melt off from the heat. In fact, I'll show you while I'm doing this. You can already see where I'm just spatulating it down, the product in the bottom. Don't want to waste any of that really gorgeous product. to heat up a minute but you get the idea and um, this one I might do um, let me see I've got a lavender a chamomile I might just do a frankincense and I'll get that started now before it completely solidifies up Okay, so it's five drops of each I used in there because these are nice, gentle, essential oils. Let me stir that in. Like so. Go down over there a minute. I do talk to myself while I do these things, so you'll do well have to excuse me looking like a bit of a nutter. probably going to keep going in all fairness but I will end this video now because you don't want to sit me watch me scraping off all the bottom but there we are so that is our soap and I will come back and show you the finished product okay so just to show you that after completely scraping out the bottom of my bowl and cleaning off both spatulas we got three soaps out of there so I will be back to show you them when they come out of the mould. So here we are with our finished soaps. This is the lavender fragranced one. Let's see if we can get that to zoom in a bit nicer. Why don't you want to focus? Thank you. There's our lavender um, oat and shea. This one is our chamomile oat and shea. And this one is the frankincense oat and shea. So they come out really nice. You can see the oat, nice bottom. They make really nice gifts. Because I've done different scents, I'm just going to wrap them up separately. Normally, I would just, um, if I'd done all the same scent, I would just put them all in a glass jar together. Um, so that's it. That's how to make melt and pour soap and put your own stamp on it at home. I hope you've all enjoyed this video and I will speak to you all soon.